So we know that in the ATV and UTV world that your shocks leak nitrogen. There's multiple styles of caps. We're gonna go over those today and we're gonna show you guys at home the do-it-yourself way to modify this cap to add a Schrader valve if you don't wanna spend the money on the upgrade caps. So stay tuned, Mel's gonna run some tools. It might get wild, it's gonna be a good time. I hope you learned something. <laughs> so the first one is the billet cap. This is the easiest way to install it. You can get these on our website, d3offroad.com. We get these made by FCR. Just slap it in the reservoir, charge with nitrogen, wicked way to do it. The nicest feature, the valve is recessed down inside the cap. So you have very little chance of snapping that valve off. So if you want the quick and easy, go online, get yourself one of those. Now we're gonna talk about the factory cap since I already showed you the billet. Factory cap, super common, Kawasaki, made by Fox Shocks, has a torque screw on it. Not all of them, but most of them. The O-ring under this screw, is known to leak, super, super common. So we're gonna show you guys how to modify this at home and put a valve in here for the cheapest solution possible. And lastly, it's also Fox Shocks, is the pellet style. So this just has a tiny little hole that you put a needle through to charge it. These don't leak very often. I haven't seen many with issues and you can change out the rubber pellet if you pierced it multiple times with the tool. So if your shock has these, you may not need to watch this video. Most times you can still run this without modifying it. It's the screw style that leaks the most. So we've clearly already pulled this out of the shock. If you wanna learn that step of how to pull this out of the shock, Mel will put a video up here above, a little box or something. You can click on that and it's explaining the shocks, taking them apart. We already have this out, so we're just gonna talk about this. A lot of people online say, can I remove this screw to check my nitrogen? And I can show you right now, if you remove that screw, you're gonna see right through it. Maybe oh, yeah. you need to hold it up to the light. Yep, no, that's good, that's good. There's nothing on the back side. The screw and this little O-ring on the screw Ooh. is holding all the nitrogen in it. So they leak, it's common for these to leak and burp and lose pressure. So the cheapest solution is to modify this cap and install a Schrader valve. There's multiple different styles of Schrader valves. We sell these ones on the website. If that interests you, you need a couple hand tools. Um, personally, we do it on a lathe here, but we're not gonna show you how to do it on a lathe because most people probably don't have a lathe at home. So we're just gonna clamp this puppy in a vise. I hope you have a vise. <laughs> if you don't have a vise. A hand drill and a couple basic hand tools. And we're gonna have Mel hog a hole through this baby and shove this valve in it. And then you guys would understand at home how to do this yourself. Cause I probably see this question every two days on Facebook and Instagram on, can I remove this screw to check my nitrogen? No, as soon as you touch that screw, you lose all your nitrogen. And people also say that they know how much nitrogen their shocks had when they had this cap, and that's impossible because as soon as you open this, it's gone. So there's no way they checked it. <laughs> they didn't know what they had. But if you do enough of them, you can tell by like the sound and how long it takes to drain, if it only had a couple pounds left or it still had a lot of pounds left. So we're gonna, switch this around and get Mel on camera now. And she's gonna be the machinist today and show you guys how easy it is for you to do this at home yourself if you pick up a Schrader valve. I also just quickly wanted to mention that the type of valve that you buy, it must be quality Schrader style valve with a quality valve core, or you will still have problems with things leaking. On our billet caps, we use uh, Showa valves, which is top of the line Japanese with the best valve core that money can get in them, <laughs> where if you just go to like a Napa and you get a valve core that has the red band on it, this is cheap, it'll leak, it'll have issues, you don't really want to run these. Um, so make sure if you're going to do this and you don't want to get one of the valves from our website, just shop around and buy a quality valve. Don't cheap out on the valve. So we're going to go over the tools that you're going to need in your shop today. You're going to need a drill. I don't care what kind it is, as long as it spins. You need a 21 64 drill bit. You need a 1 8 27 MPT tap. MPT is pipe thread, it's tapered. As you put it in, it gets tighter. And you can use whatever you want to spin that tap. Those are what you're gonna need to put this valve in. Machinist Mel, ready for duty. All right, guys, so now I'm going to film and Mel's going to be on the camera. She's much better to look at during this process than I am. So I thought it'd be nice. What do you got there and how are you going to do this? So here we have soft jaws. 
that go on the inside of your vise so mm. you don't ruin your factory cap. And then because we haven't done this before, so you've, as he said, he usually uses the lathe, we were trying to debate on the wet, best way for me to do this. You can put it like this and drill down if you want, but what I'm gonna try and do is I'm going to put it in like so and try and drill from the side to use my body weight because I'm little and I don't have a lot of leverage. Give her a little shake. She seems good. Maybe this will go south. <laughs> we might ruin a stock cap. <laughs> I have like 75 of them. I'm a machinist. Drill that hole, babe. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> so that clearly didn't work. No. You're such an aggressive driller. I'm gonna try one more time, and if that doesn't work, then we're gonna go to the horizontal way. See what happens. Clamp that tight. It looks pretty tight. Okay. See what happens. So Steve educated me. He said slow. No. And L low pressure, fast drill. Low speed. pressure, fast drill speed. <laughs> 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 As you can tell, I don't do this much. I'm a machinist, but you wanna keep this out while you start spinning and then slowly put it in or there is a grab right away. Fast? Yeah. A little more pressure. No, not. <laughs> you don't need to keep drilling quicker and quicker, just pressure change. You're almost through. I did it! Now, there's no guarantee if it's straight or not. <laughs> but the good thing is, if you're putting these on your own shocks, then it doesn't matter if you screw them up because you're only going to be mad at yourself. That's right. Yeah. You're your own worst enemy. Yeah. Awesome. Now you got the hole drilled. So now we take the top and we tap it. That's right. Okay. We got to put some threads in that hole. So now I'm going to tap it got a little bit of lube that you put on your shaft, and then you try and tap it as straight as possible. That's awfully crooked. Is it? I can't <laughs> see. <laughs> How's that? Is that more good? That's no, not straight at all. You're down on a big angle. Like that? Is that more gooder? Yeah, maybe. So we changed it around so I can see down to see if it's straight. It's pretty straight that way. Oh. That's super it's crooked. Still not. <laughs> There's a reason I don't work in the shop, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own business. Not tapping holes. Tapping holes. It's not my calling in life. I think that's better. No, it's crooked. Well, it's straight from my side. <laughs> <laughs> How do you zoom in? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's crooked from that side. Yeah, there you go. It just keeps so, moving. So, as you can see, keeping this straight is the hardest part. Yeah. This is why I do it in a there, lathe. There, that's better. When you do it in a lathe, it's nice and straight. Yes. There. I think this is good now. So, when you guys are tapping these holes, you need to go in deep enough on the MPT tap because it's tapered and it gets bigger as you go down that it's a big enough hole for the valve to fit in. So you got to go fairly deep with it. And as you can see here, Mel's just going back and forth to clean out the threads as she goes so it doesn't get too bound up. All right, you got your hole all tapped there. She's so tapped good. Up. Yep. Look at that. Nice threads. Looks pretty good to me, but I also don't know what I'm looking at. So. <laughs> it's great. Well, it looks good. It's great. So now you take your Schrader valve and you just thread it in the hole you made. Yep. And then you take that whole unit. And look at how straight it is. Wow, wow. that's perfect. Not too bad for my first time. If yeah. I can do it, you can do it. I'll tell you that much. <laughs>